Advent, December 5th, 2023. Imaginations of Others. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 through 10. Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, the mighty city. For in one hour your judgment has come. Revelation chapter 18, verse 10b. The critical theorist Mark Fisher famously remarks that it is easier to imagine the end of the world than to imagine the end of capitalism. From Capitalist Realism, page 1. For those of us aspiring to be generous in thought and spirit, this very idea may provoke immense discomfort. A primary task of theological liberation is to resist the inertia of Stockholm Syndrome, where the risk of rebellion is thwarted by the safety of developing affection and allegiance to oppressors. Why is it easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of capitalism? Because such imagination necessarily involves a revolution of spirit, where we become responsible for deploying freedom as a vehicle for freeing others. The radicality of Revelation's prophecy of the fall of Babylon lies precisely in its willingness to invite others into such a possibility. For most first century followers of Jesus, Babylon, which symbolizes first century Roman rule, has been all that has been known. What has been becomes inevitable and shapes consciousness to down to the most fundamental level. Gravity, capitalism, oxygen, occupation. Imagining otherwise is not merely naive, some might contend, but also delusional. You criticize society, and yet you participate in one, the sardonic meme goes. Imagination is not speculation, fantasy, or escape. It's the declaration that one's spirit has not been foreclosed by the forces that thrive on submission and silence. Sometimes this means imagining a better world ourselves, but often it means developing the space in ourselves to receive the imaginations of others as the acts of freedom they truly are. Dr. Peter Capretto, Assistant Professor of Psychology, Culture, and Religion, 